It's hey, can we <laughs> the start with the friendship dance? Can we start with the friendship dance? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think we're already out of sequence. <laughs> oh, right. that's do you have, have any idea how many angry comments we just generated with that? Sorry, that's all right. You know what? I don't think you need to be sorry. I'm derailing the entire show. It's not bad at all, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. The Jackass Circus is back in town. This is kind of funny <laughs> games <laughs> daily for <laughs> Thursday, May 17th. 2018. That's I'm your right. host, Jared Petty, alongside the dancing queen herself. Hello. Who are you? I'm Chastity Vicencio from GameSpot. How's it going? Indeed. So friendship <laughs> dance. Now we're going to do yes, it? Yes. Now, right. now it's friendship dance. Friendship time. dance. Indeed. Well, this goes back a long way for yeah, us. Yeah. Uh, we used to be really stressed out at work when we were coworkers together. And so when one of us would notice, we would walk out over to the other's desk and be like, friendship dance, friendship dance. And we'd both get up. And then we would just do a little dance and it would just kind of wick away the stress. It really did help. Yeah. I, I loved it. Just seeing you walk over the desk for the friendship dance. Friends, I recommend that right that. now, wherever you are, unless you be, you know, operating heavy machinery or someplace where it's not appropriate. Mm-hmm. If you've got a friend that looks like they're down, walk over, do a little friendship dance with them. It, it helps. often helps. Yeah. Lots of things up. It's kind of funny. Dames Daily. Every day we give you the news you want about the games you love. You can join us on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You can join us on youtube.com slash kind of funny games if you want to tell us what we get wrong during the show if you're watching live right now you can go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and let Ooh. us know what we get wrong during the show if you enjoy correcting others do it just correct me just correct this entire correct show. us mutual the two <laughs> yeah. of us together I, I i you know you said you derailed us there i don't think you derailed us i think you knocked us on track oh good I well think- i mean i was just on the morning show showing them my stockings and lifting my leg and then I realized that my left leg is not as flexible as my right leg and then I went to the other room like kind of shoot a video of you and you asked me about it then I turned my other leg all the way around and you freaked out it was it, I, contortion <laughs> scares me. Yeah, no, it's all right. It, it's just it's I a think little. Nick was more off put than you were. He's like, please stop doing. It, no, it was it was frightening. It was yeah. genuinely terrifying. Some housekeeping today. Uh, Greg is out at Judges Week. Mm-hmm. So is Tim. That's right, folks. You're stuck with me. Uh, they're off there right now playing all those groovy games that we're going to talk about later lucky, on. Lucky. Yeah. Oh, I always have. You ever been to Judges Week? No. Uh, me neither. I got Never. Judges Week jellies. I always want to go. The envy, the FOMO. You'll be there. Someday. I, be- I believe it. One day. <laughs> Chastity, you're over here from uh, over here from GameSpot. What do you do Correct. over there? Uh, I am the lead producer on entertainment there. So that's comics and movies and TV and anime and wrestling. Uh, that's at GameSpot Universe. That's YouTube.com slash GameSpot Universe. And I'm also one of the hosts for GameSpot. So I do a lot of live streams and all sorts of things. I'm planning E3. Ooh, I, I do a lot. Yeah, it's fun. This episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by Four Hymns, mm-hmm. but we'll get to that later. Right now, we're going to begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Heck yes. Four items. A baker's dozen. My goodness. Uh, what was I supposed to say? I don't know. You know, you, you, no, you did the right thing. <laughs> All right. You did I, exactly I, what I you're supposed to. All right, to. cool. I love your preparation and commitment. You came in, you're like, I watched Every episode from this week before I came in, yeah. I'm like you're far more prepared than I am, Chastity. <laughs> well, I was doing while I was working, so I was like paying half attention. But you, you all did a great job, great job this week. Chastity, you want to read the first story? Sure, yeah. So, uh, COD, so battle royale and zombies, guys. So that was the big thing today. There was like an hour long live stream Mm -hmm. for COD. So after weeks of teases and speculation, Activision finally pulled back the curtain on this year's anticipated Call of Duty game, Black Ops 4. Like previous entries, Black Ops 4 will come with a variety of different game modes, including the ever popular zombies, but this year's installment will also feature its own take on the battle royale genre. Who is surprised? What? What's crazy? Dubbed Blackout, the new mode pits players against each other in a fight to be the last one standing, just as in Fortnite and PUBG. Where Blackout differs from other battle royale games is that it draws heavily on previous Black Ops titles. Developer Treyarch says it wanted to create a battle royale mode the Black Ops way, and to that end, it has incorporated elements from the entire series into the mode. The Black Ops way. Yeah. I wonder what that is. Very specific. Indeed. With their own stamp on it. All right. According to Treyarch, the map in Blackout is the biggest one the developer has ever created, so very exciting. Some of its locations are old maps taken directly from past entries, and players can use weapons and items for every previous Blackout Black Ops game, including the RC car. Cool. The map is the map also features land, air, and sea vehicles. All right, that's really cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> and players can play as Hudson, Reznov, Mason, and other characters from the series. This uh, story coming to us from our friends at GameSpot. 
Hey, Woohoo! Hey. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> are you a, are you a Call of Duty person? I am not, but I was pretty excited watching this. Um, we'll talk about zombies in a bit, and yeah. I'll tell you why I'm what I'm super excited about. But yeah, just like all of this sounds great. Land, air, and sea vehicles. Yes, the RC car. Yes, like so. And it looked great. It looked like a lot of fun. And also the fact that I can play on my PC. Let's do this. I'm going to throw the question to you <laughs> right now. Yeah, the PC thing's big. The PC um, thing is big. Have we hit battle royale critical mass? Not yet, but we're getting close. Okay. We're getting really close. Wait, what's a bridge too far? <laughs> I don't know. Don't know? <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe two more. Yeah, two, two more, more. Two yeah. more major battle royale two more games. Major battle royale games. Okay. And I think that's it. But like, I'm I'm not oversaturated personally yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but. Yeah, it's, it's a trend right now. It's it's hot. It makes sense. It Do you makes think sense. It, it can exist as, I mean, genres are things we invent to help us file things in stores or find things on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, they aren't real. They're just a way of classifying things in our brains. But mm -hmm. Uh, we do tend to use them uh, in the video game industry, especially uh, for convenience's sake. Do you think the Battle Royale bucket can persistently exist as a genre? <sighs> like, is it just a fad or can it continue? Yeah, not just yeah. a fad, but yeah. is it something that can have long, yeah. two, long 20 years from now, the way we talk about, let's say, small genres like fighting games, mm -hmm. we'll we be talking about Battle Royale that way. Yeah, I think if you're comparing it to fighting games, I think it certainly has a tail and could continue a couple mm -hmm. years from now. It's like, there's just something fun about being the last person standing in something, regardless of what that is. It's just the competitiveness and just that energy and that stress level and that intensity is is very fun. And I think that will continue. I don't think it's like it's definitely a trend this year, but I think it would continue on even if people kind of fall out of it. And we're just like, ugh, another battle royale. I'm over it. People will still play. Follow up. Uh, yeah. We think of shooters in the traditional uh, campaign slash online multiplayer sense. Mm -hmm. As, as one of the biggest genres in the world right yes. now. Fortnite is the hottest thing mm -hmm. in so the universe hot. of gaming. It's so hot all right of, now. All of the rappers are playing. Uh, every, everyone's playing? <laughs> every, all all hip-hop artists? Yes. Country musicians? Yes, everybody. Concert pianists? Mm -hmm. All playing it. Yeah. Man, I want to see good Josh Groban play some Fortnite. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, I would love to squat yeah. up with Josh Groban. <laughs> That'd be amazing. But only if he sings over comms. That'd be Just to distract better. everybody. Okay, that, I want, that, just, please make this happen. Someone, please. Please. Josh Groban, if you're watching, please, please, please play Fortnite. Oh, we can sing harmonies. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm all well, about we're playing that. together. That'd be great. So back to the question: anyway, uh, call me Josh. shooters is uh, is Fortnite going to be, uh, or pardon me, or about, will Battle Royale become as widespread a thing as shooters? Will it last in, in that category? Are we going to be seeing Battle There's, Royale games as as top tier games for years? No, to Battle come? Royale will not like match up with shooters, but it has longevity. That's that's what I think. What okay. do you think? What's your personal I, take? I think it'll have legs, and yeah. I think that uh, Fortnite in particular is going to mm -hmm. have long legs. Yeah. And uh, I think that the mode is a lot of fun, but in my mind, it's going to be a mode slash limited genre. There's going to be a huge rush because, it, you know, it's 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 the Hollywood syndrome. Right now, mm -hmm. it's easy to walk into a boardroom in a major publisher and sell your Battle Royale game. Absolutely. Uh, because, Everyone's saying that like on every idea board, there's Battle Royale, question yeah, mark. Exactly. And it's like they're just trying to connect the dots to it, Yeah. whatever because, the game is. Because getting someone to give you money yeah. to make something expensive, mm -hmm. may, giving them something that's safer or seems safer yeah. makes it easier to sell. So that's I right, would that love a last. Pokemon Battle Royale. <laughs> Oh, that would be amazing. I just thought of it in my head and I just, I was like, I would play that. You just thought of that now? No, no, I, I, I just imagined playing it and I wanted to. Well, I've wanted a Pokemon MMO <laughs> forever. A Pokemon Battle Royale, I think would be better. That'd be fun. That'd be incredible. That'd be fun. 100 Pokemon. Yeah, I would play Are that. Are you the Pokemon? Yeah, I, in yes. my mind, yeah, yeah, you're the Pokemon. You yeah. use your Pokemon and you jump onto, <laughs> man, maybe inside a Pokeball. I don't know. Uh, you can't fight. What do you think it's like inside there? Because there's a lot of ideas behind that. Like, is it comfortable? Suspended Are these really animation. cramped? Like, uh, well, there's that there's that robot chicken episode yeah. where where it's a, a, a coke adult disco club. Mm -hmm. But I always kind of imagine it as kind of a dystopian <laughs> nightmare. I mean, poke, Pokemon is really neat, yeah. but it is. Don't think too hard. Don't about Pokemon, yeah. or it gets really disturbing really <laughs> fast. You. Uh, I I like to think that it's slightly comfortable in there for them. At least like a little bed, 
you know, yeah, like that. You know, this but that's something for them to rest on. And just a little bad things yeah. lay there. So it's a cell. <laughs> yeah. But that's only <laughs> half the story, cell. ladies and gentlemen, ah. because uh, the other part of this Call of Duty news still on item one of the Roper Report that's from right. IGN. You want to read this? Sure thing. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 zombie mode is getting three maps at launch, difficulty levels, tutorials, custom modes, and much more. Treyarch announced at the Black Ops 4 reveal event. All three experiences, as Treyarch calls them, will be available day one. This zombies iteration features an entirely new storyline world characters and enemies during the event three maps were revealed featuring four new characters in wildly different settings it's true they're extremely different from each other but they're all like equally interesting i think the first cinematic shows the four characters performing some sort of mystical ceremony before being transported to a coliseum using only melee weapons to take out the zombies in the second map called voyage of despair my personal favorite the crew is on what looks like a nice cruise on the titanic the iceberg is the least of their worries when the item they saw in the coliseum turned turns everyone else on the ship but them into zombies. A third map, Blood of the Dead, was teased, but no cinematic trailer was showed for it. Shown. Uh, zombies will also have tutorials, difficulty levels, a custom mode with over 100 options, and online challenges call, called Callings. More information on Black Ops 4 Zombies mode will be revealed later this summer. There we go. Okay, so that's Titanic. Second yeah. Can we talk about zombies on Titanic? That well, is what sold me. So go for it. Of everything that I saw, so zombies on Titanic is what immediately sold me on this game, and I that is the thing I want to play. And you know what? I bet it was fucking Billy Zane. Billy Zane did this. He was bit. He got on the boat. He's the kind of person that would, that <laughs> that would, would just that not spread tell the anyone infection and not tell anyone and spread the infection. Billy Zane in <laughs> this is uh, Billy Zane's I, fault. I mean, it's completely without irony. But I'm irony. really excited to play. I I don't like the movie Titanic. Even you though, don't. No, it's it, it's ridiculously entertaining, and I don't like Do it. Do you like My Heart Will Go On? Uh, yeah, the song's fine. I have no problem with the song. Fine. Good, because we we're gonna have to fight. <laughs> no, no, the song's actually pretty good. All right. uh, it's and great. Uh, it's song's Celine. better than pretty good. And the movie is a is a feat of c cinematic, like it, yeah. it, it, it it's a feat of cinematic. Two VHS tapes, my friend. You got to take <laughs> out one, got to pop in the other. But the movie's got a lot of problems. <laughs> I'm not going to go into here, yeah. but. Billy Zane in Titanic is a top 10 all-time movie villain. Yes. He's the baddest bad guy you I can imagine. You love to hate him. Yeah. But it's so fun to watch. He's and it's his fault. I bet it's his fault. I hope there's a character that looks like Billy Zane in this game. <laughs> so do you think the boat's going to be flooding the whole time while the zombies yeah, are coming in? Yeah. yeah I think they had and, that shot where like they were down below, which which kind of compared to when everyone's trying to get the F off the boat. And okay. like they're, they're just in the hallway. So I feel like it's going to... Be a little similar there. So there's going to be some flooding. It's going to be fun. I, the, I'm really looking forward to fighting zombies on the Titanic. This is a spectacularly <laughs> exciting idea. This is great. <laughs> Moving on to item number two on the Roper Report. Uh, this also from uh, GameSpot. Uh, let's talk about Thanks. the new Xbox controller. Yeah, I'm really stoked about this. This is a great story. All right. So following a leak earlier this week, Microsoft Today officially announced a new Xbox controller designed for people with limited mobility. The Xbox Adaptive Controller, as it's called, will launch later this year priced at $100. In a blog post, Post Xbox boss Phil Spencer said the new Xbox One and PS PC controller takes into consideration the needs of gamers who may not be able to hold a controller for a long time or reach all the triggers and buttons. On our journey, quote, on our journey of inclusive design, we had taken a wider view of, of our fans and a more inclusive approach to designing for them, Spencer said. By taking an inclusive design approach and considerations of gamers who might not be able to reach all the bumpers and triggers or hold a controller for an extended period of time, for example, we were able to design a controller that provides a way for more fans to enjoy gaming, Spencer added. On, another, on our journey of inclusive design, we have taken a wider view of our fans and a more inclusive approach to designing for them. This story is incredible. This makes me really happy. And just watching that video and seeing these gamers able to play as they're limited with a regular Xbox controller, it, it made my heart full. Oh, you were blinking back tears. Yeah, we watched I, it together. I, I was going to cry. It was, God, it's so inspiring and it's so incredible. Why does it strike you that way? What about it makes that impact for you? Because you never think about it. You never think about how easy it is for you to play with a controller and how limiting it is for some other people. And just to see that experience and see the smiles on their faces as they're able to play something with this adaptive controller is just really inspiring. It actually, um, um, it also made me think of one of my favorite Street Fighter players, um, Rolly Legs. Um, he, he's been playing with his mouth forever and mm -hmm. God, like, I just remember seeing video of that and just being so inspired. And this calls back to that. And now there's just, they can they can build confidence. They can just play these games, like, just as we're playing. 
with ease, it's it's incredible. Yeah, I became more aware of this than I, I was before. I, I mentioned this. We talked about this rumor a few days ago mm-hmm. uh, when we first got the pictures that popped up. Uh, when my wife was injured in a car accident, she was hospitalized for a very long time. And uh, the only – she couldn't move her neck. She couldn't move her legs. She couldn't move one of her arms. And she was bedridden. Uh, and so she could only use one – arm uh and the difference that having an ipad propped up with a wi-fi connection made in her life her quality of life for months was tremendous because that was her gateway to the world if she hadn't had that she would have been sitting in a bed able to do practically nothing but try to hold a book open with one hand and stare at a tv instead she was able to skype people she was able to type emails she was able to write back and forth with with insurance companies she was able to watch films she was able to play games because that device provided a degree of accessibility for somebody with with only the ability to touch with one hand. And that got me thinking a lot. Uh, other things in our lives around that, uh, you know, we suddenly became very aware of accessibility ramps mm-hmm. and parking and the shortage of both, by the way, that exists in many places. And some folks wrote, uh, wrote to me after we talked about the rumors the mm-hmm. other day, and they pointed out, you know, there are more forms of accessibility than just control. Uh, there, there's so many other parts of life that we, we don't think about and that we should probably open our eyes to yeah. uh, the details around around vision accessibility, hearing accessibility, et cetera. It, yay, Microsoft. Yes. Yay, Microsoft. Like, uh, it really puts things in perspective. We, um, oh, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just, I just love this story. We've actually got yeah. a letter here. Um, hi, guys. Chris here. I wrote in several months ago asking whether or not you felt enough was being done for gamers with special needs. So I'm happy to say a big step was recently taken toward making video games more accessible. As I'm sure you've seen, Microsoft collaborated with different organizations such as the Able Gamers Foundation to design a controller that is easier for special needs people to use. I'm very happy to see a large company such as Microsoft stepping up and helping in a big way. This controller is a large square with two customizable access pads and additional buttons. It was released earlier this week. It's great news and I hope to see more companies like Sony and Nintendo do the same. Do you think they will? Thanks and have a great day, guys. I hope so. I really hope that they also do the same thing because there's lots of PlayStation players that want to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Nintendo players as well. And I, I think they will. Yeah. Yeah. I'm optimistic that they will. Yeah. This is this is such a high profile device because it's so capable and so diverse. This is not the first accessibility device in gaming. Uh, the first one I know about, which is probably not the first uh, was a device for the NES that you could play with your mouth uh, yeah. back in the 80s. And people have been doing things since then. But Microsoft is pushing this to the forefront. And that's what makes this awesome. I love uh, that. And that's going to, yeah, I think that's going to, I don't think we can walk back from this. Mm-hmm. And that's good. So that that's exciting. Yeah, definitely. Story number three. Yeah, next story. There we go. Chrono Trigger, second PC update is now live. This story from Twinfinite. Oh, yeah, I'm here, so there's going to be a Chrono Trigger story. (laughs) That's right. Why am I not surprised this is in here? (laughs) Yeah. When Square Enix's PC version of Chrono Trigger debuted on Steam, it was met with a slew of criticism for fans due to its shoddy status of support. Square Enix promised it would be making good on the port's low quality, explaining that a series of updates would be rolling out to help patch things up. The first round of patches were deployed in April, and Square Enix has deployed the second round meant to help make the game look and run better based on feedback from fans. The latest update includes changes to the battle UI, as well as the screen layout, as well as control input to improve the experience for anyone using a gamepad or a keyboard. There have been alterations made to character sprites to make them look a little better and improve the classic pixel art used in-game. Additionally, the animated cutscenes have had their resolution improved along with a slew of other alterations. There's another patch coming in June, which will change up problems with the screen layout, enhancements for controls, and a variety of other things meant to make the entirety of the game a better experience overall. Nice. All right. So I'm going to ask you, so what of these improvements are you most looking forward to? And do you think there's anything on here that's missing? The biggest thing for me, yeah, I mean, there's there's still some things with the mobile interface that they there's zeroing in on here. Still some quality of life stuff mm-hmm. that, that we're getting in another update. They released it. The port was subpar, particularly for such a historically important game that's still just as fun to play today. A lot of old games don't age well. Sure. They just don't. Yeah. Chrono Trigger does. It's great. Uh, have you played it? I okay. have not, but I need to be inducted into Chrono Trigger Club. You do just for the sake of fun. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. not like, oh, I should play this because it's important. It's I've just, always meant to. I just <sighs> never got around to it. It's ridiculously mm-hmm. fun. Uh, and the Steam version is rapidly moving toward a great way to do it. Nice. That's what I love about the story. And the only reason we're going to touch on it for a second, <laughs> they released it. Yeah. We complained. They listened. That is meaningful right yeah. there. 
Yeah, I like Listen that. to your audience. Yeah. Listen to your audience. Nerd. And so two <laughs> patches already within a very short period of time, a third one coming up. I have very little doubt that by the time the patches are finished, it's already a vast improvement mm-hmm. um, that they've done. They, 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 the first uh, changes address some of the biggest complaints. Then they didn't do some more refining to make it feel less like a ported mobile game. And now they're going to polish the edges. So, yay. Nice. Go yay. play Turner Trigger. Uh, that's yeah. all I got for that. You anything else for that? No, that sounds great. All right, number four. All right, uh, from US Gamer, this is GTA 5 stats. Grand Theft Auto 5 has sold 95 million copies to date. That's a lot of copies. That's, yeah, which is some kind of crazy. <laughs> Rockstar's carjacking sandbox game is approaching its fifth birthday, and it shows no signs of applying the brakes. The news was the highlight of Take Two's financial earnings call yesterday. The 95 million copies sold milestone applies to Take Two's fiscal year ending March 31st, 2018. In February, the publisher reported it shipped 90 million copies of Grand Theft Auto V as of its previous financial quarter. Wow. 90 95 million. That's insane. I, it, it is a huge, almost unfathomable number for a for a triple A game. Yeah. Um, are you surprised? No, I'm not. Same. Yeah. I'm well, not surprised because people are still playing this, and there are like like very very passionate communities around this still, mm. and people are just playing together, and and yeah, I they're constantly making fun, ridiculous mods for this game that I love to watch. They just yeah. released a new mode this week. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's, uh, and uh, we actually, we talked about it on here as a battle royale mode, but my yeah. understanding is actually not quite BR. It's, it's mm. a little different. It's, it is still a shrinking concentric yeah, circle, a shrinking but they do some different map, things that yeah. make it, that it's not just about dropping in. It's about mm. jumping for platform. It's uh, a different kind of setup. Definitely well, that's worth what you looking gotta, at. You can't just make exact copies of yeah. the same formula over and over and over again. You have to yeah, they made it, it, they made it their own. Good. Um, yeah, and they've and also GTA is a game you can go back and play. Yeah, uh, and just make some. You know, you can play single player for hours and still sure. have fun, even if you finished it. So, mm-hmm. I think the 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 big thing to point out here um, is that this is another example of games blurring the line of art. Uh, not just like oh, games come into legitimacy. No, games games are just another pillar of artistic creation mm-hmm. and commercial product. Uh, this is, yeah, 95 million. That's a number we can compare to other games, but it's also a number we can compare to film mm-hmm. or television or games are a part of the artistic and creative community. And that's that's the real yeah. takeaway from this is that it's not so much about how much more this is sold than other games. It's about how this is elevating games overall mm-hmm. as a medium. That's my yeah. thought. I agree. Um, I also think that this game is extremely accessible um, for different levels of gamers. And I think that contributes to the high number here. Uh, just, you can be a casual gamer. You can be, there's like people that are actual cops that love playing this game. And mm. so it's just anyone can play with you. Yeah, that's I, fun. I don't remember who it was at IGN. You might remember there was someone that whenever they play GTA games, they follow the traffic rules. <laughs> And they've done this for a long time, but oh, like they stop at all the stoplights. And, that and is adorable. Who was that? One of our coworkers <laughs> at IGN. I don't remember which oh, one. And they weren't being ironic. This is just how they play. That's that's really cute. Which I like I that a lot. Kind of great. They <laughs> still great. like murder and blow things up, but they always follow the traffic laws. <laughs> Obey traffic laws. Uh, if I wanted to know about other new games. Oh, New games that were coming out today. If I wanted to play new games today, I Indeed. wanted to buy new games today. Uh-huh. Where would I look, Chastity? Uh, the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Uh, where Da-da. is there a list? What? This is the list. That's we're the giving list. them the list. But what they're going to expect, we got to do the song. All right. Are you ready? Do yeah. you want to improvise the song or do you want me to um, do it? Please start and I will riff off of you. How da-da, about that? Da-da, 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 New games. There we are. I, I, I don't know. I'm not even getting a look from the mic over there with Kevin, so I'm not sure. Uh, it got the got thumbs up. I was expecting that. Games. Ah, yeah, you Here didn't do the yeah. Are the new games. All right. Check I like out these new games. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Please. Y- your song is really good. Oh, thanks. You should just sing everything here. You have a good singing voice. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. You did that album. Mm. Why do bring they bring up? it up every time? Because <laughs> it's so much fun. I'm trying to put it in the Because that cover of, of Teenage Chastity during, uh, her, during her album is so spectacular. Thank you. <laughs> Out today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Switch Day. Here we go. It's Thursday. All right. 
ACA Neo Geo Super Sidekicks 2 for Switch. Fortnite Solo Showdown is available right now, and that runs through May 21st. Garage, also available for Switch. Greg Miller likes that game. Hyper Sentinel for Xbox One. Immortal Redneck for Switch, aren't they all? Lake Ridden for PC. Laser League for PS4 and Xbox One. Minecraft Phase 1 Aquatic Update. That's out right now. That's cool that you've seen that yet. No, I have not. Underwater Minecraft Whoa. shenanigans. Amazing. Yeah, that's pretty neat looking stuff in that update. All right, okay. It's the first part of their of their underwater rollout uh, okay. that just happened. Sweet. So pretty cool. One Piece, Pirate Warriors 3, Deluxe Edition on Switch. Reverie Yay, on P- What's that? Yay, anime. Yay, anime. <laughs> Reverie on PS4, Suicide Guy on Switch, Super Chariot on Switch, The Fall on Switch, Three-Fourths Home Extended Edition on Switch. Would Three-Fourths Home Extended Edition be like five-eighths home? Or, no. <laughs> I'm bad at math. I guess math it'd be seven-eighths. Seven-eighths? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> up, up, bot. Uh, also for Switch. All right. And then we got a new date here. I'm going to bow our heads in sadness yes. at this one. Uh, pour one out. Skull and Bones has been delayed. Ubisoft announced the delay during its latest earnings report, saying it has decided to give itself more time to develop Skull and Bones to offer players an even more engaging experience. The game is now scheduled for release in 2019 2020. The pirate naval game was previously slated to launch in fall 2018. Chastity. I have no Ease. inside knowledge of this. Pure speculation. If you are a company developing a big open world pirate game and you look at the other big open world pirate game mm-hmm. that people complain there wasn't enough content for. Not enough to do. That was my main complaint about that game as well. So, but I still had fun playing Sea of Thieves. So is this the advantage of coming out second? Yes, actually. <laughs> this is the advantage of coming out second and learning from those they're not mistakes, but kind of, yeah. Learning from that experience and implementing it into your game. So good for them. Yeah, just yeah. give us a better game. You played a lot of uh, Sea of Thieves. Did I did, you, Was yeah. it a No Man's Seas yeah, issue was, for you? it or? was fine. Um, I had issues with the combat. Uh, it was just very difficult to maneuver and you only had a certain amount of bullets. Um, but uh, it's not about combat. It was it was about just like, steal, like knocking... <laughs> knocking other people down and taking like sinking their boats and just like finding other people in the world. And, but it, sometimes it wouldn't happen. Like sometimes you'd just be sailing around by yourself mm-hmm. and it's just like, all right, we're on our boat. Where is anybody? Nobody is around. Did and, you enjoy that or not enjoy that? The, uh, the, I enjoyed, I enjoyed when we did like run across people. Yeah. I thought that was super fun. I, okay. I had a good time. Um, but and, not enough of that. Yeah, not enough of that. Just add more. Just it needed a little bit more to do. Need yeah. that tweak. It well, does. It looks it like does. The, it looks yeah. like uh, Ubi is going to make sure there's a little more in there. All right, so. please do, please do. Yeah, I'm excited about Skull and Bones. Yeah. Deals of the day. We got one for you here. Uh, Xbox Live will be free for everyone throughout this weekend. This is from IGN. Microsoft has announced the Free Play Days for All event, which lets all Xbox Live players without a gold membership play online for free on Xbox One and Xbox 360. The event begins today at 12.01 a.m. PT, etc., and will run till May 20th at 11.59 p.m. PT. So if you don't have a gold membership, guess what? You got to get to go play some games online for a while. So yeah, there's a there's a deal. Also, Microsoft will be offering free access to the Xbox One versions of Rainbow Six Siege and Fallout 4 for a limited time through May 20th. Uh, yeah, That's I pretty like, cool. Yeah, I like that Fallout yeah. 4. I like that dare game. Yeah, I'll, I'll try some Rainbow Six Siege and die very quickly. But I, I've been trying to get into that game, so I might as well do it while I can for free. Do you like it? Uh, no, I haven't played it yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, but this, now's your chance to yeah. jump in and play it. Everyone around me is playing it. Got a nice weekend to hop in and play it right mm-hmm. now. Reader Mail. Today's Reader Mail is sponsored by 4 Hims. 4 is your one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional if you move quickly. Uh, if you wait too long like me at this point, there's not a lot science can do. I don't know if you're aware of this, Chastity, but I'm bald. What? I know. It's it's striking. Uh, I, I, I It shocks people when I tell them that. But despite the fact that I work very hard to conceal it, I am, in fact, bald. You, on the other hand, have just a positively have, lustrous mane of I healthy hair. I have too hair. much hair. You can have some. You have spectacular hair. I have hair. too much. It's like when I get a haircut, it, it looks like I murdered a animal. Like a tribble? On the floor. Yeah. There's a tribble on the floor every time I get a haircut. Do you, do you like having thick hair? Yeah, it's it will benefit me, so mm-hmm. that's great. It's just a lot, and I pity anyone that has to share a bathroom with me usually. Well, the thing is that 66% of men will lose their hair by age 35. That's two out of three men wow. lose their hair by the age of 35. 
So they're going to look at you and be like, man, I wish I had hair like chastity. They're going to look at me and be like, that's where I'm headed. But if you're a part of 4 you may very well be able to do something about this because well-known generic equivalents to brand name prescriptions are there to help you keep your hair with no waiting room and no awkward doctor visits, saving hours. Going to 4 Andy and Nick have both been suffering from hair loss for the last couple of years, and they've been using 4 to help out. The process is super easy. They have people going back and forth with them, trying to find just the right products for their needs. They're all about it. They feel a lot better, more comfortable with themselves. So you can order now and get a free trial month. Oh, pardon me. Get a trial month of 4 for $5, just $5 right now while supplies last. So once again, get a trial month for just $5 right now while supplies last. See the website for full details. This will cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. So go to 4 slash games daily. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash games daily. 4 slash games daily. And now to reader mail. Number one. Mm-hmm. Hello to the Kind of Funny Games Daily crew. Hello right back at hello. you. Hello. Hello. Isn't it funny? Like, hello. Hello. I need some advice. I've seen the supposed Nintendo E3 press conference leak, and I'm trying to figure out if I should let myself get super hyped about it or if it's a bunch of mm. BS. Do you think this rumored leak is at all credible? I need to check the Tim Gettys hypometer. Tim, sadly not here. not here. So we're going to do our best. Yeah. I'm attaching the Twin Galaxy story regarding it on the off chance you haven't seen it. They, by the way, also seem really skeptical. I am also incredibly skeptical about this. This, by the way, from Five Star Man, Asa Gray. Hey. All right. Let's uh, let's hear about your skepticism. Very skeptical. Um, I, is this involving the image that says Treehouse at the top? Yeah. It has the list. It seems fake to me. It mm-hmm. seems like someone took all of the rumors and things that they know about and put it on there and... Uh, it said like Yoshi's freaking island on it. I don't think they would put that on there. Yeah, well, so Yoshi's flipping. Wasn't flipping it? Island, Flip, flipping yeah. island, and yeah. It it just didn't seem legit to me. It just seemed very like purposely constructed to look real. Yeah, but isn't. That's where I felt too. Yeah. Um, I I think that I think that probably something that there's this thing from Lord of the Rings where a character says to another character that I feel like a servant of evil mm-hmm. would look fairer and or look fouler, pardon me, look fairer mm-hmm. and feel fouler. Boy, I screwed yeah. that up. Uh, that that things that are legitimate may look ugly, but be full of substance. Yes. This looked just too slick to me. Also, um, in a document like this, they would have code names. They would not just put the names of these things there. They would have code names for these games. Mm-hmm. And that is just a fact. Um, I just did some sponsored content for a game and didn't get told what it was until the trailer dropped that day. And up, up until that day, all I heard was a code name. And yeah. I had already been, it had been sold, it had been confirmed, had no idea what the game was. So I really don't think that they would put out a sheet like this without some code names. Code on names are a very common part of industry parlance. And even after the game's name goes public internally it is still very common because people have been using it for so long Mm -hmm. for people to continue to use the code name inside the organization just because everybody's used to it and treehouse is under lock and key like how would this happen yeah that's that's something else treehouse is famous for its these are the folks that snuck the metroid other m on us Mm -hmm. you know that I just think it's too perfect a leak yep um leaks do happen but no I, i think this one's that said um, what do you, what would you love to see from Nintendo this year? Pokemon on Switch. Yeah, I want more Pokemon on Switch. Think um, you're gonna get it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't know what to what capacity, but we're getting something. I just ah, don't know what it exciting. is. I just don't know what it is. But yeah, I'd be really stoked to get some Pokemon on Switch pretty soon. But I know that there will be a f- grand future of Pokemon games on Switch. We'll just wait and see what we're getting. How about you? Uh, for me, I really hope the Star Fox thing is real. I think yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. And I love Star Fox more than just about anything in the whole wide world. Um, the idea of a racing slash shooting game is far more appealing to me than just a racing game. Mm. Uh, that's a genre that, or a subgenre that's almost forgotten, but that when it's done well, um, I'll go all the way back to an NES game, something called RC Pro-Am. You ever mm. played it? No. It's a shooting racing game. Uh, and shooting was just important to getting ahead of people as good steering and acceleration. And it sounds like that's what this one's gonna be built around. Mm -hmm. Uh, Likewise, Mario Kart falls into that category, uh, combat racing game. I love those. 
Yeah. And oh, I love the battle mode in Mario Kart 8 yeah. Deluxe. Yeah. Well, I'm not just talking about battle mode. Yeah. I'm talking about like yeah. using items to move oh, ahead yeah. of other people. Mm-hmm. Or And I think the way they're describing this would be enemies flying around. And as you mm-hmm. destroy enemies, you speed up. Okay. Or, All right. I'm, I'm into it. So it's, it still have that rail shooter feel of Star Fox. It's an evolution of, yeah. of what makes Star Fox good. And yeah, I'm all about that. So. I'm all for that too. That sounds great. I love when we dance. You want to dance again? Yep. Let's right. do it. Da, 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 da. This is like old times again. Oh my gosh. Very excited about it. Cool. All right. Got to move on to the next uh, next reader mail here. All right. Quick question. This is from Sarutobi Sensei. Mm. Are you betting on Shin Megami Tensei's Strange Journey Redo being ported to Switch? Or is it obscure and specific enough that I can be confident <laughs> of a one-time purchase for my 3DS? Because I really want to play this game. It looks so rad. So, Jared, uh, thanks for reminding me. You have any investment in the Mega Ten universe? No, but I I think this could happen. To answer the question, I think it could be on Switch. Um, I think they're just gonna put a bunch of stuff on Switch. I don't see this being impossible. Mm-hmm. How about what, you? I think that it's technically possible. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of reskinning that might have to take place, sure. particularly around some of the cutscenes. Uh, the CG is just built for that lower resolution, mm-hmm. and I worry about that. I wonder if they're gonna want to spend the money to HDify this game because the assets are lower res. Um, I'm gonna talk about this on uh, uh, Kind of Funny Gamescast this week. Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey is the best game you've never played. It's it's one of those. Really? Uh, it's, it's one of those really great games that almost nobody played. Wow. And um, it's a superb, deep, wonderful RPG. All right. Uh, really oh, I cr- believe you. Yeah. You it's, know your stuff. You like the RPGs. Persona? You like yes. the Persona? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love like, Persona. So this <laughs> is what I like about I love Persona also. Mm-hmm. So what I love about Strange Journey is it's still got all the demon mixing joy that mm-hmm. you get from Persona, but it's about it's about adults. Okay. Um, it's about grown ups on a on a expedition to Antarctica uh, that stumble into another dimension, and so it's a very different vibe than Persona with a lot of the same rad mechanics and depth. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. And a, Instantly and sold. Really cool story. Yeah. Uh, I, I recommend this to folks, but I don't see it on 3D or I don't see it on Switch just because Atlas knows you will buy it for 3DS. Mm. Yeah. Um, Atlas, if they think they can sell enough on Switch, sure, but I don't see it anytime soon myself. Sure. I think the fact they just I, did it on this. I think eventually, maybe. I think assets yeah. are the only problem, mm-hmm. whether or not you want to upraise your assets or not. But yeah, it's, um, I would buy it because give Atlas money. That's my answer. <laughs> How many more questions do we have time for? Oh, we're good. We're in yeah? great shape. All yeah. right, great. You want to read one of these? Sure. Um, can I do this one? You right do whatever here? one you want. All right. Hey, all. This is totally a Jared question. Uh, you'd be surprised because I am big. Like that's why I, I'm I put, very, that's why I'm I put very this on into this. What is the appeal of pinball? I was at an arcade recently and they had a bunch of pinball machines and I really don't get it. Is it a skill thing? Each machine is different. So is it a variety thing? Help me understand because hitting a ball with flappers was not fun. I don't know if I'm missing something. Yeehaw, lime face. So I put this on here specifically because I you were on pinball. the show. Yeah. yeah, I love pinball. Uh, what is it for me? I think just starting with the fact that I can go out and touch something physically at an arcade that I cannot get the same experience playing at home. You need to play on a pinball machine. I've played digital pinball games, not the same, not the same feeling. I know a lot of it is nostalgia for me because I grew up with arcades. Um, but why do I continue to play pinball and why do I like go to California Extreme? Like we go to California Extreme every year mm-hmm. and we play a lot of pinball. Why do I keep going to that? I want to see new pinball machines and I just want to I want to see the improvement, the technological improvement on these machines because I've played with old machines growing up, but just like streamlining those and making them even quicker and making them even faster and just um, the cool things that they can do on in a pinball machine just and like all of these, like there was a Star Trek machine then there was a Kiss machine and what was the one last year, Ghostbusters? Uh, I don't remember last yeah. year. But I don't know, I just keep going back, one for nostalgia, two because I just want to physically touch something in an arcade mm-hmm. and it, that, doesn't translate to a digital experience. Does it? Does it? Is there something that the tactile feedback yes. of the electromechanics for yes. you? Yes, yeah. exactly. Kind of like how I I still love reading a book, just like that tactile feeling. Mm-hmm. I love that tactile feeling of being able to hit flippers and like move the table, and it's just something I enjoy and just a feeling that I enjoy. So here in the Bay Area, we're very privileged. There are several 
pinball arcades or arcades, arcades yeah, yeah. here in the so you can go out and play pinball all over the place. The Pacific Pinball Museum is nearby in Alameda. That's mm-hmm. where the place Free Gold Watch, where yeah. uh, Sam Claiborne for IGN yeah. uh, operates some of the machines there. Uh, really great machines. He takes such good oh, care yeah. of them. Good job, Sam. Uh, do you play league play at all? Because there's a lot of that around no, here. No, I don't do league play. I'm. I don't think I'm good enough. Uh, I'm a very casual pinball player, but mm-hmm. I love going back to. California stream every year. That's kind of my pinball weekend every year. Yeah, <laughs> and then whenever I'm ab- around a pinball machine, I'll play it usually. Two things with that. Uh, just to piggyback, I'm not a good pinball player. I enjoy it very much. I am terrible, and I'm not just being like false modest. I'm truly terrible. Uh, but uh, the 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 click over for pinball for me is when you start to understand that pinball is a game with rules that once you learn them, it becomes infinitely more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. If you're just trying to bounce the ball back with that's, the yeah, that's flipper, not the point. Yeah. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're playing pinball the way that somebody might play a first person shooter for the first time, mm-hmm. hop in online, get murdered in COD <laughs> by people who have been playing it for years mm-hmm. and be like, why do people do this? Yeah. Pinball is about learning the specific rules, uh, first of the of the genre itself, which are kind of universal between machines, second, the rules of that machine, mm-hmm. and then learning how each table has its own optimizations and goals. It's not about the flipping. It's about that first shot, about specific targets, mm-hmm. about an order that you're trying to hit things. Yep. The different challenges and the way those are set up differently on every pinball table. Yeah, and they're all unique, mm-hmm. and every table has a flavor. Yes. To it. Mm-hmm. And once you get that and understand what you're trying to do on the machine, it changes pinball. Yeah. That's that's my take on that. Yeah, um, I just love it. Do you have, you mentioned you're not crazy about uh, video pinball. Do you have a, a favorite digital pinball that, that you ever fool with? Mm, not really. There's what, Pinball Museum? Is that the one that was on PS4? So that's the one you play with? Uh, I, I don't play digital pinball yet. Okay. I, I, if I play pinball, I'm going to play actual pinball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Jackie Crush for me probably is my favorite, which is the mm-hmm. sequel to Devil's Crush. Oh, cool. Uh, which is the sequel to Alien Crush. I like the Crush series, but Neat. those are rad. Yeah, but they're not the same. Um, also, California Extreme. Yes. Pretty cool. That, that is not where we met, though. We no. see each other every year, but no. that was the second yeah, place. We, we we've saw. been friends for a while, and I I randomly showed up at your apartment one day with Max Scoville and, and uh, Jen, his fiance. Yes, you were picking <laughs> up a skirt. She was picking up a skirt. She was yeah. picking up a skirt that had been mailed to my apartment. <laughs> well, that was a very strange. Why was day. it mailed to your apartment? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Max was out of town. He's like, can can Jen's skirt get mailed to your apartment? It was very Max is a weird man. And then we saw each other at Calex a week later. We're like, oh, you're the yeah. you're, like, the, hey, you're the you're lady met. that I was came in your with house. the skirt. Hi. Yeah, that was very strange. <laughs> yeah. Ah, friends fun with Jared since. and Chastity. Yay, go friends. Hooray. Yeah. Friendship dances all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh all right, let's uh let's go here for another one. Okay. Uh, Hi, Jared and Chastity. Following up on the Xbox exclusive question from Wednesday, do you think the rumored Fable game and develop it at Playground Games could be God of War, Breath of the Wild level reboot Hmm. and success the Xbox needs? Chris from Madison. That sure is optimistic. Yeah. I don't know. Fable 2, Mm -hmm. really great game. Uh, I I think. Do you? I didn't play it. Didn't play it? Okay. I don't know. Fable 2 is a really great game. Mm-hmm. 1 and 3 were very interesting. Okay. Um, I think that it would move some units, and I think it would get the Xbox fan base very excited, and mm-hmm. I think it would be great press for them. It is possible somebody could develop a game like that, but you don't get a lot of games like that in a generation. I'm sure that every developer wants to make the best game they can. Of course. In a moment. Yeah. Um, but I... I don't want to disparage or speak in an uninformed way. I think that it could happen, but the the idea that it's going to be God of War level is not likely because <laughs> the emotional a, gravity that's of God That's a of bar War. that's set super high now. You that, enjoy God of War? Oh, I'm loving it. I'm still playing. Yeah, me too. I love it. Yeah. yeah so no spoilers, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to see a new Fable game. I think that franchise deserves to exist, and uh, I'd like to see it be a very good game. I don't think it's going to move too much there. Okay, I got one more for you, Chastity, and we're going to go off on a, a weird one with this little. Got it. Hi, Jared and Chastity. I was wondering what your thoughts and opinions are of the PS2 classic, The Bouncer. This is so specific, but I feel like you have an answer. I have an agenda, actually. <laughs> also, do you think that we should, will ever see that game again in some form or another remastered remake, port, etc.? Square does like to re-release old games. So I still have a slight hope of playing the game again on my PS4. Thanks, and have a great day. Drew, a.k.a. To Canada, 
Ah. All right. So the bouncer is weirdly specific. Specific. Yes. Do you have a history with the no. bouncer? No. <laughs> what is the bouncer? Tell me about the bouncer. I brought this up not because I'm particularly interested in the bouncer. Okay. We're not going to get a great bouncer <laughs> answer for you. I'm sorry. But because okay. of what he said about re Square Enix loving to bring games back. Okay. Yeah. There was a period of time, particularly last generation, where Square Enix just just practically vomited out remakes <laughs> of everything on the DS, on the GBA, sure, on, yeah. on, on, on other platforms. Mm -hmm. And now in with the HD focus, there's a little less of that going on. Um, and some of that, I think, is they realized that some of their brands that were kind of beating to death. You look at what happened to the Mana series, mm -hmm. for example. But if you could reach back into the depths of time mm -hmm. and bring back one Square Enix game, what would you go for? I don't know. You don't have one? Not really. Don't How have about a you? Back yeah, there? like not back then. I want, I, I want, uh, it definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, Einhander's up there because I think that's a kind of game that doesn't get made very much anymore. And Do you think it will? No, I just want it to happen. I, I'm just okay. living in fantasy land okay. here. These are just hopes and dreams. And uh, and, and then uh, the granddaddy of all Square games that we don't get to play anymore, Bushido Blade. Um, okay. Which is the most okay. chastity game I can imagine. <laughs> Have you ever played it? No. Should I play Bushido Blade? That is the most chastity game right, I can well, think of. All right, well, if it's the most chastity game, then I have to float it to the top of the list. It's like a yeah. one-hit fighter with weapons. All right, cool. Yeah, Let's it's freaking it. amazing. Yeah. You would love We're going to play this Into together okay. later. All right. All right. So Sold. nothing to say about the bouncer here, though. Sorry, Sorry about that. yeah. All right. I didn't even know the bouncer existed. The bouncer does exist. Wow. And I was never... Some It has a cult following. People love okay. it. Okay, um, I believe that. I was not as drawn in, but there was, a, you know, Square Enix used to do a lot more experimenting, mm -hmm. and it was one of those. I guess the last, I'm gonna, now I'm, somebody's gonna correct me, but I guess The World Ends With You is the last really experimental, like, platform handheld mm -hmm. Square game I remember. They've done some mobile stuff, of course, it's very interesting. But that's the last one that I think of as, as kind of like a, a weird, wild, wacky Square Got game. Got it. Squad Up from Squad Jesse up. Wilson on PS4, username Bazinga. Please, shoot, let us change our names, he says. <laughs> but this is Bazinga, B-Z-I-N-G-A. Oh, man, that's that's painful. Sorry Ooh. about that. Got that Sheldon Cooper going on. Sure does. Uh, I mean, that's a great show on CBS uh, that um, GameSpot belongs to. That's fine program there. <laughs> Excellent. I can't say anything. <laughs> I'm playing Destiny 2 with a clan of five, and we are looking for a sixth person to assist us in the Leviathan raid. Ooh, Once that's again, a toughie. That bazinga. That their raid. One Good of the rotating segments, this would normally be where I would get salty. However, I am going to cede oh. my salt time to you because... When we invited you to be on the show, yes. the first thing you sent over was, can we please talk about this? And you sent me a yep, new story. Yep. And mm -hmm. then we talked about it yesterday. I got a funny <laughs> games daily when I was in here. That's all right. That's totally fine. But you care so much about this. Chastity, yeah. take it away. Well, it was, it was the Power Rangers crossed with Street Fighter mobile game that I got super excited about when I saw the image of Power Rangers, Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers next to the Street Fighter characters, like my heart like jumped out of my chest and I was freaking out. I was like, what is this? I need to know. And I looked it up and it's a mobile game and I couldn't play last night because the Street Fighter characters did not unlock until today. So if you are playing that game, which is a tie into the last Power Rangers movie, um, those the Street Fighter Warriors unlocked today at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So they're available now. Is it so, and a, I can't play, wait to play. Is more. it a swipe fighter? Or? It is a swipe fighter, yes. Okay. So you swipe to move around on the map, but then you hit for special moves and you have to wait for those to charge up. Okay. So, so it's, it's about timing and swiping. Yeah, yeah. swipe fighters. Yeah. I think some swipe fighters are really interesting. I, I had fun. I enjoyed it. How do you get the Street Fighter characters? Are they pay per character? or you, that's, the, that's the quick way. Okay. It's like uh, you can either pay to get them or you unlock boxes. Okay. And, yeah. And do that thing. And, Get, right. it, get them that way. But why, why was this so catalytic for you? Because these are the two things that I loved the most in the world when I was seven years old. Like just the most. Those these are this was my world back then, 1993, mm -hmm. 94. Um, so yeah, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I was drawing them in my book. I was playing them like during recess, pretending to be the Pink Ranger, and like, why aren't you the Yellow Ranger? I'm like, why does it, do why do I need to be the Yellow Ranger? <laughs> and they'd be like, oh. <laughs> like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love, well, Kimber I love Kimberly Hart. That's I'm wearing yellow right now, so I know like, and I've also cosplayed as the Yellow Ranger. So you can cosplay as any Ranger you want. I could be any Ranger I want but to. But why do you have to be the Yellow Ranger? Uh, I know why do I need to be Yellow Ranger, but exactly. I could be any Ranger I want. Kevin, who is best Ranger? Um, Kevin's Kevin's asleep. <laughs> 
asleep. I was leaning back. The Green Ranger. I, I couldn't see you. I just saw the your green, feet up. Or, well, don't yeah. make assumptions. The Green Ranger. Then why the Green Ranger? Because uh, he's cause got he the Dragon Zord. Yeah, dude. <laughs> It was dope. Not only did he have a dragon sword, the way he called it out with the little do, like dagger do, flute. Do, 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 do. Yep. Into okay. it. Awesome. So dope. Although You're... I did originally have a crush on the Red Ranger first. I had a crush on him. I thought he was really cool. I liked the way he led the team. I was boy crazy at seven. Who knew? There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, while, while both of you have excellent opinions here, the, the, the best Rangers, inarguably, Aragorn of the Dunedain. <laughs> Um. Uh. Yeah. Lead, okay. uh, king of Gondor. Uh, uh, the King Elisar, oh, the Elf man. Stone of the House of Telkintar. Yes. And well, he's got beautiful hair. The beautiful. guy that just argued for the Green Ranger <laughs> call me a nerd. Yeah, fuck I go. also have another thing I want to call out really quick. So you and me are gonna do a thing at E3. A thing. A thing. Are we allowed to talk about this now? Oh. I didn't know that. Um, well, we're mentioning it now, but we won't say. I can't mention any of my other guests, but I'm with you right now, and okay. I won't say to what extent we're doing and what we're doing. But watch for me and Jared at E3. Yep. Watchgamespot.com on Thursday of E3. Ooh, I, I, that's all I can say. We're I didn't know we could talk it. about it. We're I'm very excited. It, Ooh, okay, me and Jared are going to co-host a thing. Just, we are. We're that's teasing it, and so. we're definitely going to dance there. We're going to definitely dance, there. and we'll be able to stand. And I'll up. do the weird, freaky thing with my leg, and oh, everyone will leave. The weird, freaky thing. Everyone I wish, will leave. Is there a way we can show that here, Kevin? Is that, is that possible? It's it's not. That. Okay. All right. So okay, we got to make sure your feet are in the shot. Oh no, you can't see your feet. Can't see your feet. You got to back up. Got to back up. All right, here we go. Ready? Show this off. This is this is not okay. This is not okay. What's the scariest part is the ease in which she does it. Oh yeah, it's 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 effortless. But try your other foot. It doesn't work. No, no. See, then it's like ah, can't do it. All right, one more time. Show this blasphemy. Oh, there you go. That's just... Oh. No. All right, sorry. I don't uh. know what's wrong with my right leg. Something must have happened to me as a kid. I don't... I, I don't know. I think something just happened to me now that I'm never going to be able so to unsee. sorry, everybody. Well, it's like be- <laughs> beholding some kind of Cthulian nightmare. Oh, my. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out how wrong we are. Chess, you want to check and see how wrong we are? Sure. You start Where do from I start the, reading from? So down at the bottom, you'll see the... Uh, that'll be the most recent is the bottom. So you just... <laughs> Scan through there. The character in Lord of the Rings that Jared is thinking of is Frodo. When observing Aragorn soon after meeting him in Fellowship of the Ring, I think a servant of the enemy would look fairer and feel fouler. That's correct. He is talking. Well, Frodo is talking That's to K-Babs. Aragorn. Yeah. yeah. That is yeah. That is Frodo <laughs> speaking to uh, 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 to Aragorn. It's at the inn at Bree. Uh, that's when the other hobbits are in the room with it. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, uh, Lucar Wolf said a correction to the Black Ops Four zombie story. A, stor- a short cinematic teaser trailer for the zombies map Blood of the Dead was released today, and it teases a reimagining or a return of some of the Black Ops Two zombies map Mob of the Dead, which was noticeably absent from last year's Zombies Chronicles expansion for Black Ops Three. Thank Uh-oh. you. That wasn't in that article. Yeah, somebody Fix tell it, IGN. Uh, somebody tell Miranda Sanchez at IGN. I believe that was her article. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it, it might be updated by now. Yeah, probably we, is. we printed it like. Yeah, we printed this a while late. ago. So yeah. my guess, yeah, it's don't, don't actually bother do not, Miranda. Do not bother. Do not bother her. Miranda. She's so pure and wonderful. Leave her alone. Yeah, she's yeah. the best. <laughs> she's the best. All right. Um, on what's inside a Pokeball, this is also from K Babs. Kotaku interviewed Junichi Masuda, producer on Sun and Moon, and she said, I think it's safe to say that's very comfortable inside a Pokeball. It's very comfortable environment. Maybe the equivalent of a high end suite in a fancy hotel. Great. Yeah, that's exactly what I was envisioning. I was just like, just a nice bed, you know? Just, a golden cage. Yeah. It has also not been depicted at all consistently across any media, be it manga or anime. Yeah, that's true. It so would there's be no a- consistency. What if there, I mean, that'd be a great game. I would play a Pokemon What's game that took place a inside a Pokeball. Yeah. Uh, all right. Microsoft revealed the Xbox Adaptive Controller very early this morning. Xbox Adaptive Controller is made for people with physical disabilities. Is going to allow even more people to enjoy gaming. Do you think Sony will follow Microsoft's lead? If they is this oh, a question? I think that's a question. That, that is got a question. Into, got Thanks. into your yeah. wrong somehow. All right. Yeah. Um, Anything else we missed there? Take a look. I think right. that's it. Is that it? I were think we, were so. Were we that right today? I don't know. Look how right we were. We just, might not be. There's a lot of things on there from yesterday, so I'm getting a little mixed up. No, I, but there's stuff here definitely. All right, I think we were just. I think we were just full of rightness. Wow, today. Uh, mostly you. Look, because, look how correct yeah, we are. Yeah, you are. You have so much knowledge. Nonsense. I have. All I, have, I do is no. a weird thing with my leg and talk about Power Rangers. Whatever. You're the best. Uh, I, I love that you read the news stories today because you're a far better reader than I am. You're a great host. Oh, I love watching you. you. Yeah. Where can thank people you. watch you? Please go to Gamespot.com. Also, please go to our YouTube. 
for entertainment because that is the channel that I run. It's called GameSpot Universe. So go to youtube.com slash GameSpot Universe and you can see, I think today I have my spoiler review of Deadpool 2. So after you watch Deadpool 2, check it out, leave some comments, tell me how you feel about Deadpool 2. Um, and yeah, we do a lot of great videos there, comic book explainers. We had a lot of Avengers Infinity War content there. And I'm also on GameSpot doing live streams. I'll be doing a Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition live stream for launch day tomorrow. Exciting. Yeah, very exciting. You like the Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, it's yeah. super fun. I mean, I'm playing it right now and I'm really loving it. I, I like Dynasty games. I like whacking things with a sword. Yeah. It's fun. It's very therapeutic for me. It Just is. Hacking and slashing. The Gundam game is like that for me Good too. Good stuff. All right. Uh, so, friends, thank you so much for watching, listening at all, etc. We here at Kind of Funny appreciate all the support you give us each and every day and the fact that you are indeed a warm and wonderful community that I feel proud to be a part of. Uh, so, thanks for that. The best friends are awesome. Tomorrow's host, uh, you're uh, stuck with me again. Again, and I'll be joined by, in her kind of funny debut, oh. IGN's Casey DeFridis. Yay! Uh, Casey's lovely. Yeah, Casey's the best. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll sometimes see her on IGN's Game Scoop, and uh, that's where you may know her for, from, but She's she'll be in a here Monster tomorrow. Hunter expert. So she if you is. have any Monster Hunter questions, ask her. Monster Hunter, get her get her talking about Drakengard sometime. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pokemon. She loves Pokemon. Scalebound Disappointment. Mm -hmm. Um, she she weeps when she thinks about Scalebound. Dang. She's yeah. my dragon buddy. Oh, You're my dancing so nice. buddy. She's my dragon buddy. Aww. So, Chastity, uh, normally we'd end the show with a handshake, but I think for you and I, it's a little more appropriate to, to do a dance. To do a dance. Dance our way out. Dance right. us out, Kevin. <laughs>